it's uh, Jen Megan here uh, for another HNHD briefing. Today is October 10th and uh, 1010, as Megan just pointed <laughs> out before we started the broadcast. And today we're going to be talking about something very important the romance rules and how to follow them, who's following them, and what our exceptions are. So, um, I think actually romance, more than any other subgenre, has a lot of rules that have to be followed. And uh, one in particular is the happily ever after. It's not really considered a romance unless it has that happily ever after, or at least a happily for now. But, you know, the man and the woman, they have to get together in the very end and, um, and fall in love and make babies, or at least do the making of babies. Um, and so, yeah, that is one of my big rules. Um, another one that we've talked about before in the past is infidelity and whether or not that has repercussions now um, and how that kind of influences the genre now. But uh, So I think that, the, like Jen said, probably the only rule that actually is a rule is that there be an HEA or an HFM. Um, but a lot of readers have their own deal breakers and their own things that they don't think uh, make a book a romance if it includes it, for example, infidelity. Um, I think that's probably the biggest one. The, the reason we're talking about this is because someone in a comment mentioned that a book, I believe it was a book by Anne Stewart, um, has a couple together and then uh, and they have a baby, but then in a later book the baby dies or yeah. is dead or something like yeah. that. Yeah, we, we meet horrible. the baby and then they die. Yeah. Oh my god. So, yeah, I would be really distressed if I read that. And that's actually going to what you guys were talking about last week, why I don't like second-generation romances so much. We have a post on second generations in historical romances coming up next week from Jenga, who's one of our um, awesome historical experts. But that's beside the point. So, for me, um, I don't like reading Infidelity, um, but I'll read it. I'll read anything if the author writes well and can make me believe in the hero or the heroine's actions in doing it. Um, what I, yeah, I think I have a problem with it doing, with authors doing it just to break the rules and be like renegades. But if it makes sense, then I'm okay with it. And I just went and looked up um, Karina Hall's Love in English, which is a recent example. It's a new adult, and I feel like probably the rule breakers are happening more in new adult contemporary and erotic romance. Um, but uh, the Goodreads reviews are pretty much split between, or not split, but either they're one star or they're five stars. And everybody mentions the fact that it's a book about infidelity. And that's really interesting to me because I think that um, even five years ago you wouldn't have gotten any romance reader saying that infidelity was possible. Um, and I think that's probably one of the biggest things that a romance has to have is no cheating. So. Yeah, because I mean, kind of the rule with cheating, right, is that you think if they're willing to do, if they're willing to cheat with me, then they're going to be able to cheat on me. And I think that is the worry with books that involve infidelity, as like they're happily happy for now, is that you know, are, how long will they be happy with? a cheater as one half of the equation. Um, so I think that's all that we have for you guys. We kind of want to know what your exceptions are um, as far as what rules you're willing to break, uh, what your um, what your hot button issues are with, uh, with romance, and then of course we always want suggestions for the uh, reading um, we always want suggestions for the romance novels that um, fit into these rules and the ones that break the rules that you still love. So let us know in the comments, and we'll see you next week. Bye.